Okay, the last thing we're going to do is do diff and diff analysis, but instead of doing it manually by um, doing all of this group by and summarize and then pulling out each of these cells for A, B, C, and D and subtracting them, that's really tedious and awful. Um, we're going to use regression to do it instead. So we'll add a new section here called diff in diff with regression. And we'll insert a new chunk right here. So to do this, as we saw in the lecture, all we have to do is include a column for group, include a column for time, um, and then include a variable for the combination or the interaction of group and time. And then that should show us the um, causal effect. So to do that, we're going to make a model. We'll call it model simple. And then we're going to set this equal to a linear model. Our outcome variable is log duration is explained by, so we want our group, we want our time, and then we want group times time. So our grouping, our treatment and control group was high earn plus after 1980, because that's our control, that's our before after column. And then, oh, not that, plus we want the combination of the two. So high earn times after 1980. Um, the data set we're looking at is our injury data set. So we have to specify that. And then we want to see the results. So we'll use tidy and then model simple so we can see the results of the model here. So now if we run it, we have a bunch of coefficients here. Um, if you remember from the lecture, we had this chart here, which I still haven't updated, so it's slightly incorrect. Um, but what it shows is how you can divide each of these coefficients into that two by two table that we've been looking at. So this should say, that shouldn't say treatment, that should say control. Um, so the control group pre-mean should be our intercept. So if we look here, the intercept is 1.12. So that should be our control group before. If we look at diffs, that is going to be our control group. So higher and equals zero. And after 1980 equals zero, that's before. So that right there, 1.12, should be our intercept, 1.12. Neat, it worked. Um, high earn, that's what happens if you have the treatment group turned on. Um, so that's this beta, so that's, again, this should say treatment and control. So if you say alpha plus beta here, so that's gonna be the intercept plus high earn, that should show you the before average for the treatment group. So let's check it. Um, so 1.12 plus that thing, we can just do it in the calculator here, that plus 0.25, and we run it. It says it's 1.38, so that is the estimate for before high earners. And if we look at diffs, this is our before high earners, it's 1.38, 1.38, it's the same. Um, and we can go through that same process for everything. We can reconstruct every one of these things here by just adding the different coefficients, the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta there. You don't really need to do that in real life. Just know that that's, you can piece the two by two matrix thing together that way. What we care about most though is this delta because that is the causal effect. That is the coefficient for our interaction term, group, and time. So if we come back and look at this, there's our 0 0.1906. That is the estimate for high earn times after 1980. Um, and if we look back here where we did it manually, that is the diff and diff, the 0 0.1906012. We look down here, 0 0.1906012, it's the same. That is way easier than pulling out the manual ABCD stuff. You just run the regression, look at the coefficient for the interaction term, and that's your causal estimate. So the policy caused log duration of weeks or caused duration of unemployment to go up by eight by 19% is what that's showing. And that's really cool. Um, the other cool thing about using regression is we can control for other things. So if we copy this chunk here and paste it down here, we'll make a model instead of model simple, we'll call it model complex because we're going to control for some other stuff. So we're going to keep our high earn and after 1980 and our interaction term, but we can throw in some other control variables. Um, so the original um, 
researchers included a whole bunch of stuff like male, um, married, um, age, whether or not they were hospitalized, and a whole bunch of other things like that. So we'll just include those. Um, this is from the before days, before there were DAGs that showed what was confounding and what was not confounding. Um, so we're just throwing in a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, in real life, you would want to draw an actual DAG to see what you need to control for or adjust for. You might not actually want to control for things. Um, you can still do inverse probability weighting. You can still do matching um, with interaction terms with diff and diff. So like you can still do kind of the, the normal regression adjustment stuff we've been talking about, but have the interaction term here for diff and diff. Um, so let's control for some stuff and see what happens to our causal effect. So we'll control for a bunch of stuff. And if we scroll down, um, we have a whole bunch of coefficients. We can still piece together the two by two matrix thing with the high earn and after, after 1980. Um, it's gonna be off now because the intercept is no longer just um, control group before. It's actually control group before when male is false, when married is false, when age is zero, and if hospitalization is false. Um, so it's harder to piece everything together because we've got other variables in there. But we still have our causal effect here. So now instead of 0.19, I think is what it was before. Yep. It's now 0.17. And so it shrunk down a little bit because we controlled for some other things which are helping to explain the causal effect. Um, but it's still a positive number. So this is now saying that um, the duration of unemployment increased by 17% because of the program. That was a causal effect of the policy. Um, if we want to see both of these models at the same time, we can use model summary. So we can add a new chunk here and say model summary, and then make a list of our two models. One was called model simple, and then the other one was called model complex, spelled correctly. So if we run that, we should get a nice side-by-side -side table here. There. So it includes a whole bunch of coefficients. Um, what we care about the most is this one coefficient here, high earn times after 1980. So you can see the causal effect is still positive. It just decreased a little bit once we controlled for a bunch of stuff. And we could control for other things, add other models, and see how that changes. But that's how you do this diff and diff stuff with regression. Way easier than this individual stuff. Um, there is value to pulling these, these values out here because that's how you can actually plot this. Um, really, the only thing we had to pull out was the after treatment value um, and before treatment. And then we had to find that causal effect. But if you, if you pull out just those two and then run a regression and pull out the diff and diff column, then you don't need to go through this whole process. Um, and you can still make this plot here. Um, you just need to know what the points are to draw the lines. And you can draw the lines and get your magical plot and your magical regression table. And that is how you do causal inference with diff in diff. Um, the example on the website is a lot more complete, um, fully annotated with some other um, approaches that you can take to, to analyze this stuff. So um, refer to that. This was mostly just to show you the process of loading stuff in R and doing stuff with R. Um, and yeah, good luck with your problem sets and with your assignments. And it should be fun and exciting.